What's up, fight fans, and welcome to the All Access MMA UFC 300 preview show. I am Ryan Jarrell, and you know who these two guys are, UFC bantamweight Marcus McGee and UFC lightweight Kurt Hollibaugh. Guys, before we talk about this card, I want to start a little bit with both of your own personal careers. Kurt, let me start with you first, just because you fought very recently. Obviously, a tough fight with uh, Trey Ogden didn't go your way. What are the, uh, the immediate thoughts uh, afterwards, you know, looking back on that matchup? Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's always your initial thoughts is I I, I could have did more, you know, I could have did things different, I could have did a little did a little bit more, um, you know, preparation had nothing to do with that. I thought I had one of the best training camps in my life. Felt great going into the fight. In there, I feel like another thing is you always want to get in there and really feel it. You want to get in there and feel everything that's happening. And I just don't feel like I did that. I felt like you know, and a lot of guys that call it a off night. So uh, you know, I'll just go with that. Felt like it was an off night. You know, hats off the tray. He did what he had to do to get that win. But, uh, yeah, you know, hopefully uh, I'll be back here soon. We talked, you know, leading up to that fight. Were, were you surprised that, you know, just maybe how good on the ground he was? His top control was was very difficult to get out from underneath of. Yeah, uh, and I figured he may even take me down, but I would be able to get up. I don't think anybody has ever been able to really hold me down like that. And you can even go back. I fought some tough Russians in Russia. They couldn't hold me down. Uh, Tiago Moises couldn't hold me down. But I felt like, uh, I don't know, some some things were different in that fight. And uh, I felt like anything that I tried to do was going to put me in a worse position. So I just kind of ha had the hopes that, you know, as soon as we get back up or the next round starts, you know, I still have my, the chance to knock him out. So I, I never really lost hope of that chance until the bell ring in the final round. I'm sure you're eager to get back in there, Kurt. Uh, what's the best time frame? When, when are you hoping to jump back in the cage? Yeah, so, you know, I hit my manager up immediately after that fight, and I said, look, man, uh, I said, I don't want to sit out seven months again because I was like a seventh-month difference from the, the finale that I did with Austin in Boston and then, uh, you know, the fight a couple weeks ago. So, you know, I always like to keep that momentum rolling, and I said, I'm not trying to jump back in the ring tomorrow, but let's, if you can, get me on the books, you know, and uh, let's make something happen. Get me on the books, maybe two or three months, you know, two months. Give me, give me something, something in two months. I'm good. Oh, definitely all excited to see you back in whenever that is. And Marcus, it's been a little while since we've seen you in action last. we got to go back to your big win in January over Gaston Bolognese. Uh, I'm hoping we're going to see you soon. Is there a fight announcement around the corner? So no, no finding out of it around the corner, but I, I'm assuming it's going to come soon. You know, I, I really think it's going to come soon. So I'm excited to see who uh, I get matched up against as well. And uh, excited to start the preparation for that too. So it's been nice just, you know, focusing, grinding and uh, getting better. So I'll be excited to return as well. And you're really taking this uh, bantamweight division by storm. A lot of people feel like you're someone that can make some serious waves here. And you crack that top 15. Do you feel like, you know, you're maybe just like one fight away before you're really getting these marquee matchups in, you know, potentially top 15, top 10? You know, maybe, right? You know, uh, I never know. I never know these things. But I, it is, uh, I do appreciate the love that I'm getting from, uh, the for the fans from the, and from the MMA community because you know it's like I came out of nowhere uh, and I always thought that it was gonna be that way. I used to think that all the time, like oh, in my head it just would ring out. This guy came out of nowhere and he's just going off, and it's like it's pretty dope to uh, to be doing that uh, and to be to to be in this moment. So uh, I do believe it. I do believe I'll be up there when and and uh, and how it all happens. Only one man, only one knows, and he's not a man. Uh, but uh, I'll be excited to take on all those challenges. And I know you're a very respectful guy, so you're not going to be talking trash, but is, is there someone that, like, if the UFC said, hey, who would you like to fight? Is there someone that you think makes sense for your next matchup? I have thought about a couple guys, you know. I, I found the same card as, what is it, Farid Bar Barshad? I can't think his oh, name. Oh, uh, Farid Basharat. Yeah, Basharat. the younger brother, the one yep. that fought uh, on the card with me, too. And I feel like we both fought in the same time, so that... that That'd be cool too. But I mean, again, I'm not against anybody in the division. Like, you know, I'd like to move up the rankings. It'd be nice, you know. So if someone up or higher than me is is cool, you know. Uh, but no, I I just looked through it all and I don't know, they all look like banger fights to me. So I'll be excited to see who who the challenge is. Well, definitely we're excited to see the both of you guys back in action, hopefully sooner rather than later. 
we, we're here today to talk about UFC 300. This very well may turn out to be the best MMA card of all time. There's not one single bad fight on this card, guys. Is there one that stands out more to, to you than the others that you are looking forward to the most? Marcus, let me just ask you first. Is there one fight that kind of jumps off the page to you? Yeah, it jumps off. Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway. That one just jumps off right off the page to me. I think that that is just uh, a classic in the making. I think it's going to be a greater fight than we even uh, are worthy of being able to be a part of. So I do think that's going to be a great one. I think the whole card's great, though. But yeah, that one jumps off the page for me. Pert, same question for you. Yeah, I got it the exact same. You know, I think uh, Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway, that's a fight for the fans. And it's for the BMF title for a reason. Um, it's going to be a crazy fight. We both know how both of these guys fight, you know? So, uh, I think we're in for a treat. And, and guys, I'm a huge Max Holloway fan. I, I don't like to see Max lose, but I, I hate this fight for him. If I'm just going to be honest, I, I feel like Gage is just going to be a little bit too big, too strong that the power, his power punches are, are next level. And, you know, Max has fought the majority of his career at 45 and, and Gage, you know, obviously up a weight class. Is this going to be a competitive fight, or do you feel like Gaethje potentially just maybe another step ahead of, of Max and his power might be too much? Um, for me, I, I think it can be a competitive fight. I think if uh, as long as Max don't stay in the pocket with him, you know, if Max stays long and uses his good boxing like he has, um, he, he can make things interesting for Gaethje. Marcus, what do you think? I have to agree. I definitely think that I don't think that anybody can stand there and just bang with Justin Gaethje. Like he's he's too down for that, and he's really good at that game, you know. And and the, his power is ridiculous. So I definitely think that if Max plays his game, though, it becomes a way different fight, right? If Max stands there and gets takes a lot of damage from Gaethje, uh, things kind of change. But Max is not necessarily known for that. He can take damage. But he, it's not like he just takes damage a lot of times. A lot of times, that's why they say he has some of the best boxing because he is slipping and, ev and evading and rolling and getting out of the way of these shots. So if he can do that, I definitely think it, it becomes a lot tougher of a fight. Right now, guys, the odds are Max Holloway is the underdog, plus 160. Justin Gaethje, the favorite, minus 185. One aspect of, of this fight that really is intriguing to me is the, the wrestling aspect of Justin Gaethje. We know how uh, elite of a, of a wrestler he is, and you know Max is great as a stand-up fighter himself. So if, if Gaethje is ever in any trouble, the, the wrestling side of his game could come into play. Do you expect to see that, or do you feel like this is going to be a stand-and-bang fight? Kurt? Let me ask you first. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I mean, everybody knows Gaethje's got this wrestling in his back pocket, but I, I don't think we're ever going to see him really use it. Um, I think if, uh, even if things are going bad for him, I still think that he's going to stay doing what he's doing. Marcus? Yep, I agree. I agree. I don't think so. Uh, and I don't think either guy is going to shoot, but I think that Max kind of gets, uh, you know, gets a bad rap on his grappling premise, and he could do it too, you know. he There's a good chance that he'll mix it up and throw in a takedown there, but I don't think that's going to be their goal. I just think that, like, if positions play and they have to end up in those gra grappling transitions, they will. But uh, are they going to shoot? No, nah, they're banging it out, I think. I think that's exactly what we're going to see too, guys. No, no surprise that we start with the BMF fight here right out of the gate. Uh, let's actually move next to the main event, which is for the 205 title. Alex Pereira, Jamal Hill. Right now, Pereira is the favorite, minus 140. Jamal Hill, the dog, at plus 120. Marcus, are, are those odds right, or do you feel like Jamal Hill is going to get his hand raised here? I do think that Jamal Hill gets his hand raised. I don't, I don't, I'm not counting Pereira out. You can never count Pereira out, but I think they're counting Jamal Hill out. I think they forgot about what his uh, abilities are, you know, like he definitely, he didn't get this fight and they didn't put him in there for no reason. This is going to be a very tough fight for Alex Pereira. So I do think those odds, those odds make sense though, because who's been more active? Pereira, you know, uh, he's already been fighting. He has the belt now. Uh, Jamal is coming back from injury. All these things play a part. So the odds make sense, but I don't, I think people are sleeping on Jamal. Kurt, what, what do you think about this light heavyweight title fight? Yeah, really interesting fight. Uh, and it's a good fight. I think it's one of the best fights that you can make in that division right now. Um, 
but yeah, I think the odds are right. You know, like uh, Marcus said, you know, a lot of things go with coming to factor in. Um, for hey, has been active. He is the champion right now. Um, Jamal coming off of injury, been out for a little while, relinquished the title. So uh, I think the odds are accurate. It's going to be a great fight, but uh, you know, uh, right now I think I'm happy to go with Perea. How do you see him finishing this, or does he finish this fight? How, how ultimately does he get his hand raised? Uh, I think this fight has to be a finish, man. It's going to be a tough fight. Um, I feel like both guys are going to. I don't think they're going to play it super, super safe. You know, I just don't think that's Jamal Hill's game. I don't really think that's Alex Perea's game. Um, I, I, but if he wins, it'll be by knockout for sure. Marcus, is this fight ending a finish? Agreed. Yeah, hundred percent. I think this fight does not go to distance. I don't think either guy is planning for the fight to go to distance, and uh, I think that's how they're both going to come fight. So no, I think I definitely think it's going to be a by knockout one way or the other too. I don't see it being any submission, even though Jamal kind of has that in his back pocket too. I think people don't know that, but uh, I think it's going to be a, yeah, someone's getting, someone's getting knocked out. Can't wait for that fight. It's, it's uh, the, the only thing that stinks for me is I'm on the East coast. It probably won't uh, start until 1230, 1 AM if, if I'm lucky. So I'll, I'll hopefully I could stay up for it and not fall asleep. The the co-main event guys is another title fight. Wei Li Zhang, Yan Jonan. Kurt, right now, uh, Wei Li is a massive, massive favorite, minus 440. Uh, Jan is plus 340 dog. Do you think those odds should be a little bit closer, or is Wei Li head and shoulders better here? Um, you know, honestly, I don't really know much about Jan, uh, to be honest. But, uh, you know, everybody knows Wei Li. Everybody knows what she could do. She's fought some of the best girls or uh, women are already that, that's been champions in the UFC. So, uh yeah, a lot of times when you got that, I mean, like I said, I don't really, I'm not really familiar with Yarn, so I really can't even tell you a fight that she has fought in the UFC. So for me, I, I definitely got to go with uh, Whaley. Marcus, how are you feeling? And then likewise, you know, I've seen a couple of uh, Yarn's fights, but nothing, nowhere near as much as Whaley for sure. And how well he's been looking. So, I mean, the odds, the odds kind of make sense, but the only reason I think not is because of the fact that you got a challenger coming in and fight a champion, those odds got to be closer then, or it's like such a mismatch. Is it a mismatch then? If the odds say it's a mismatch. So, uh, I don't know, maybe we're counting Jan out, but uh, yeah, I definitely, I, I think Wei Li's going to get it as well. Yeah. If anyone places any money on Jan and she comes up and finds a way to, to get this win, they could seriously, if they parlay that with something, they can make some real good coin. Not you guys, because you're active UFC fighters, so you can't bet. But anyone else out there that, that wants to maybe think about throwing some money down. Uh, we've already talked about the BMF title fight. We'll keep it moving. Charles Oliveira, Armin Sarukian. My goodness. Th again, this card is so amazing. Uh, Armin is your favorite. Minus 225. Charles Oliveira is the dog. Plus 190. Marcus, are we seeing an upset here from Oliveira? Or are you going with Sarukian? Yeah, I think we're seeing an upset from Oliveira. I think he does his best work as a dog, too. Uh, just going back and look at him, I think he does his best work as a dog. Uh, and I think he's going to come out with that chip on his shoulder. And I think uh, Sarukian, I think in 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 his best um, path to victory is through ground control submission game, right? No one really gets on the ground with Oliveira like that, you know? And if it's in a striking battle, I definitely think Oliveira is going to be cleaner, um, land harder, better shot, sh uh, shots. I definitely, I think it's going to be upset. Kurt, are you in agreement here? Does Charles Oliveira pull up the, uh, the upset as far as the betters go? Yeah, uh, I definitely agree. I think uh, kind of what Marcus was saying about Oliver, man, he's just too clean. And, and a lot of people realize or don't realize, like, when you go back and look at it, the only loss that Charles Oliver has and I don't even know how long is to the champ, right, Makachev, uh, which, yeah, he didn't look good in that fight, but who knows what kind of factors played into that. He comes back against Dariush, who is on a, you know, rolling and absolutely makes him look bad. So I think we can kind of see maybe something similar here in the next fight with Oliveira. Yeah. And to, to be fair too, like I, I don't know anyone that looks good against Makachev, right? Like if, if someone goes in there and gives him a tough fight, that, that just goes to show just how much of a stud that person is. Uh, again, really intriguing lightweight belt. Can't wait for this one. 
our next fight, guys, is the biggest mismatch on the card as far as the odds go. Bo Nickel minus 2300 right now. Cody Brundage plus 1100. And I'm just going to be honest. Like, I, I always do my best to be as objective as possible. I don't, I don't know Bo Nickel. I've never met him. I've never interviewed him. I know Cody really well. I've been interviewing him for a really long time. So I can't help, but, you know, cheer for the guy here, but I, I feel like he's being massively disrespected. Like th this is a guy that has got a lot of power. He trains at factory X an amazing gym. I, I mean, if you're going to throw some money down and think you're going to win big, this is a guy that has the knockout power to pull off this upset. What do you think, Kurt? Let me ask you first. Like, it, do you think Cody Brundage can get it done here, or is this just a big mismatch for him? Absolutely, man. Look, those are just odds. But what people fail to forget that this is a fight. Like anything can happen in a fight. That's why you can't really predict these things. You can't really predict who's going to win. Now, everybody can go with Bo Nickel just because of his accomplishments and what he's already done in the UFC. You know, and. But at the end of the day, it's still a fight, and it only takes one mistake or one good, solid punch to be landed. Marcus, how do you feel about this middleweight bout? Yeah, likewise. I think that they're definitely counting Cody out as well. Like, I think I like Bo Nickel. I think he's great. I think I definitely think he has a big possibility of being a champion and holding that belt for a while. He's definitely up there with his uh, accolades and everything. But uh, Cody is no joke, man. You know, like, and again, he's coming in throwing bombs and. He looks great. He trains hard, trains for like, a great gym, like you said, too. Like, all those attributes play a big part into this fight, and it is a fight, you know, and and he comes to fight. I, I like him a lot. Like, he shows up to fight, you know, and I think that's going to play really heavily into how this fight goes, you know. I think he's going to – I think he's going to surprise a lot of people in this fight. Yeah, I mean, he's had one fight in, in the UFC where, like, to me, he, he didn't really, like, look himself. That was against uh, Cedric uh, Dumas. He just, he looked like maybe he wasn't there mentally. And, I mean, you guys could tell me more more than, you know, anyone, right? Like, do, do you guys, is, do you just have off nights? I mean, you talked about it a little bit, uh, Kurt, against Trey. Like, are there some nights where you're just not there, you're not yourself? Um, here, yeah, I'll go. Yeah, um, but yeah, you know, me, I, I think definitely so. And like I said, man, you know, normally, and it's like same thing in the gym, man. You show up some nights at the gym, man, you're just not feeling it. You don't, you know, you you might be a little tired. You might be a little sore. You might be a little run down and just your rounds don't go the same. And then there might be days you show up that, man, you're energetic, you're happy, you're, you're excited, you're motivated. And then you have one of the best training days ever. I think it's the same thing when I step into the cage. And just like I was saying the other night, man, I think, uh, you know, I just wasn't there, wasn't as excited as I should have been, wasn't as motivated. Um, and I've had times where I've stepped into the cage and I was the happiest person in the world. Everything felt like it went right. So I definitely think we have good days and bad days. Marcus, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, and I have to agree with that. Like, you know, we're all human beings, you know, before stepping in that cage, we're stepping in there as human beings. And we, some days we have good days, some days we have bad days, and how we show up on those days is uh, impacted by that, you know, our emotional creatures, um, mental creatures. So absolutely, I definitely think that plays a big part into into every fighter, uh, no matter what how their career is going, you know? Yeah, one thing I know for sure, if Cody Brundage shows up the, the best version of himself come fight night, Bo Nickel's going to be in for, for a tough fight here. So these odds are, are kind of bananas to me. Uh, we'll keep it moving, guys. Alexander Rakic, Yuri Prohaska. Prohaska's the dog, plus 100, Rakic minus 120. Marcus, do you agree with that? What do you think we're going to see here in this uh, light heavyweight fight? Yeah, I, I agree with those with the with the odds on that. Uh, but man, Racket is a beast, man. That's another fight where you're just like, all right, well, if I'm throwing money, it's just gonna be throwing money for like things on paper, you know. But paper doesn't always make sense when those two guys step in the cage and look across from each other. So that's a banger right there. I I don't know, man. Coin flip, Kurt. Do you think this is a coin flip fight? Um, it it could be another inter another interesting fight for that division, you know. Um, but. I feel like there, there's a lot of times where Jerry's look good in fights and there's some times where he he doesn't look good. So uh, I'm going to have to go on the other side with Rakish. And um, I think it's just, you know, another thing of him being an up-and-comer coming up and we're about to see another star in that division. Yeah, and Prohaska is very unpredictable inside there, so you never really know what we're going to see. But Rakic seems a little bit more consistent. Maybe that's why he's the favorite at minus 120. 
this next fight, guys, is one that I have circled because I'm really interested. A lot of questions to be answered. This is a featherweight belt. Al Aljamain Sterling, the former bantamweight champion, is taking on Calvin Cater, someone who's been a mainstay in the division for a really long time. Kurt, let me start with you here uh, on this one. Uh, Calvin's the dog, plus 135. Aljo's your favorite, minus 155. What do you think we're going to see here in this featherweight belt? Man, I think this is one of these fights where you just don't really know, right? Because Al Jermaine's coming back. He's coming up from Bantamweight. Um, and, and even you look at him at Bantamweight, a ton of success, you know, former champion, had many great, great fights. I think he's one of the best back takers in the UFC. But uh, Calvin Cater's going to be a little bit different, man. I mean, dude's a great boxer. Um, I think Aljamain definitely has to try to put him down. Aljamain can't box with him. I mean, let's just be honest. I don't think Aljamain can box with him. So uh, Aljamain's hope is going to have to be to put him down, try to take the back, and, uh, you know, look for a choke or, or hold the back for the, the round time. Marcus, you in agreement? Oh, yeah, 100%. He hit it right on the nail. You know, hit the hit the nail on the head, you know. Uh, I definitely don't think he wants to box with, with the cleanest boxer, one of the cleanest boxers at, at featherweight, with power, with precision, with distance manage. Like, that's not what he wants to do. We all know that he wants to go take that fight to the ground, um, and I think that's his best his best weapon, too. But I do think Cater's going to be a little different in that area as well. I'm not counting Aljamain out. He's a great fighter. He's going to go down in, in, in history as one of the greatest, you know, there's no doubt about that. He will be a, a Hall of Famer one day, you know. But, man, that's a tough one for him to step into featherweight at. I mean, that one right there was like matchups make fights, and I feel like that's a that's a crazy matchup. So he will he will up, he will change a lot of people's mind, mindset if he can make get that one done. No, for sure. Yeah, if this does stay on the feet, like you said, Kurt, I mean, Calvin, a really, really good boxer. So it'll be interesting to see if Aljo can can hang there or if it's just going to be a, a, a fight of styles where he's going to have to get it to the ground to to get this win. So it, intriguing bout, especially to see what uh, Sterling can do here at 145. Kayla Harrison is making her UFC debut, taking on Holly Holm, one of the biggest favorites on the card, guys. Kayla Harrison, minus 460. Holly Holm, the veteran, the former champ, plus 360. Marcus, uh, is is this a fight that should be closer in odds, or is, is maybe Holly Holm a little too old to be stepping in there with someone like Kayla Harrison? I think that's what they're putting it all on. You know, like, if you look at the match, I think it's the matchup, too. It is a really terrible matchup for Holly Holm's. Kayla does possess a lot of the skill sets that you would put against a Holly Holm to beat her, you know, and then age and all that stuff. But, you know, uh, Kayla's pretty up there in age as well. So, and she's dropping out of 35. How is she going to be able to take damage? I don't know. I think it, I definitely think it should be closer because they're, they're counting the Holly Holm out who, you know, finished Ronda Rousey to take the belt. You know, it's like she shows up in those moments. So it should be closer, but the same, I can understand where those odds come from. Yeah. Kurt, what, what do you see uh, happening in this female fight? Yeah, you know, stylistically, uh, it's not a good matchup for Holly Holm. But like Marcus was saying, you know, Kayla's big, man. So, And I don't think she's ever made this weight class before. Uh, she has a hard time making 45, you know. And now she's going to drop to 35. So if, if Holly can just, you know, hang in there for a little bit, which I'm sure she can. I mean, she's a professional. She's been doing this for a long time. You know, you you never know how those later rounds are going to treat, you know, Kayla after a big weight cut. But, uh, you know, if I was going to go with somebody, I might just have to stick with Kayla Harrison. Yeah. And like you mentioned, her her never making 135 before. I, mean, I, I don't think she has. I mean, she's jacked. Like, she's got muscles. Like, I mean, I've, I, I, don't, I haven't seen a lot of females that are built like she is. Do you think that she walks around at maybe 170? Is that a, is that a stretch, or do you think she gets that heavy? Um, No, it, it, it can definitely yeah. be 170, you know, 165, 170. She, she, she's a big girl, man. She's, she's muscled up, yeah. thick. So, uh, yeah, yeah, she's definitely big. Yeah, Marcus, I, I mean, yeah. what do you think about that? Do you feel like she's probably as big as like a welterweight walking around? Yeah, I think so. I seen her uh, in Miami. I was down there in Miami for college fight and uh, and uh, Shook's fight, and I seen her down there, and I'm like, yeah, 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 she's definitely in the mid 60s for sure. You know, I was like, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe 64. She might have been 64 that day. <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I can't wait for this fight. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, what Kayla does here in the UFC. Again, this is her promotional debut, so really looking forward to that matchup. This next one, guys, is is a fight that also, you know, I have highlighted. It's a couple of young up-and-comers who got a lot of hype behind them. Diego Lopez, Sadiq Youssef. This one's pretty close as far as the odds go. Diego is your favorite, minus 130. Sadiq is the dog, plus 110. Kurt, what are your initial thoughts on this one? Uh, man, good fight, and you know, I'm a fan of Diego, too, just from the way he came into the UFC and, and gave such a tough fight to uh, – who, who was that that he debuted against? He was a top-ranked guy. Oh, um, God, you got to ask me. I'd have to pull it up. I'm yeah, not sure. You know, um, and I think it was – was it Mozart or, or something like that? Yves Luev. Was it, was it Mozart? It, 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 it could have been. It could have been. It was one of, one of those guys, right? And then the fight that he gave him and then what he's done since – Man, I don't know. Um, it's going to be a close fight, but uh, I might have to go with Diego. I think he's on a roll. He looks good. Marcus, what are you thinking about this one? I think it goes back to what kind of Sadiq shows up to. Because, I mean, yeah, Diego Lopez looks great. You, I really think – just I follow him on Instagram, too. He just looks like he's dialed in for this camp, too. He's coming in there with, uh, with some real intention, and I love it. Uh, but, man, I think people – forgot about Sadiq too and he could he came back to fight against Edson after people were just like they don't really know but Sadiq was looking like a world beater for a long time you know and uh he is really really skilled as well I see this being a great fight uh I definitely would say it's a coin crop toss as well different uh different areas might play heavily into Diego's different area might play heavily into Sadiq yeah, uh, I, I I totally agree. And Kurt, you were uh, spot on. He he lost the UD in his debut to to Mozar, so you're a good good memory there. Um, and I want to start with you on this next one, Kurt, because it's your weight class, Jalen Turner, the Tarantula. Talk about another guy that is just very unique for a weight class: tall, long. I don't know how he makes one fifty five, and he's taking on Hanato Moicano, another banger of a fight. Turner's a pretty big favorite though, minus two thirty five. Uh, Moicano is the dog plus 200 here. Do you agree with that? Or do you feel like Moicano is going to continue this momentum he has? No, I think I agree with that, man. Because like you said, Jalen Turner, is just, he's got to be the biggest lightweight ever. Like he's the biggest lightweight in the world. The dude is freaking huge, right? I feel like he can definitely fight at welterweight or middleweight, but uh, no, he makes the weight cut, man. But that, and that's not just it. You know, the guy has skill too. He's a great fighter. And uh, I don't know, Mercano, I think I think he he talks too much sometimes, but um, I'm gonna have to go with Jalen Turner. Marcus, you in agreement with Kurt again on this one? Yeah, I'm in agreement with Kurt. You know, Mercano's a dog, but uh, you know, Turner's a dog too, and he's big, and he's long, and he's strong, and he's fast, and he hits from long distance, short range. Dude, he has so many weapons. You know, it's like. You know, I I just I think uh Morikano only has like one avenue to to like uh one path to to winning. And I just think that that's going to be a really hard path against a Jalen Turner. Yeah, again, man, another fight that I can't wait to watch. Three more fights to cover, and then we'll cover all of them here for this massive UFC 300 card. Jessica Andrade, Marina Rodriguez. Right now, Andrade is your favorite, minus 125. Rodriguez is the dog, plus 105. Marcus, we'll start with you on this one here. Do you feel like there's some dog money on Rodriguez, or are you going with the, the former champ Andrade here to get the win? I think there's some dog money on Rodriguez. You know, I think that uh, I definitely think she can go in there and do her thing. Uh, I think it's a winnable for her, you know, so definitely there's some dog money as well. But, you know, I'm not counting. I, again, that's a that's a you got to throw it up. You got to throw it up for that one for me. It's a close fight. This is what I'm staying away from. Kurt, are you are you staying away from this one, too, as far as like, you know, uh, thinking like, oh, this lady is definitely going to win this fight because it's kind of a close one. Yeah, you know, uh yeah, th this was hard to call. Um, but the last time I counted out Underage, she uh, she looked great. So uh, yeah, I really don't know. And, and I'll go back to where I'm not super familiar with Rodriguez. Definitely, I've seen her fight quite a few times. But uh, I've been on the actual card with Underage. I've, I've watched her many times. Um, so if I had to pick, I would pick Underage just because I counted her out last time and she proved me wrong. 
All right. Uh, Jim Miller, Bobby Green, lightweight bout. I mean, this one is for the, the hardcore fans, right? Like all of the guys that have been following the sport for a long time know exactly who both of these two are. I don't know how many combined fights they have together, but I know it's a lot. Jim Miller right now is the underdog, plus 150. Bobby Green is your favorite, minus 175. Kurt, this is your weight class. So what, what are you thinking here? Who, who gets the win? Yeah, man, I, I I think there's some dog money on Jim Miller. You know, he he's another guy you just cannot count out, man. Every time you do, every time they throw a young guy at him, he passes with flying colors. So it's like, you know, um, and this is actually a fight that I kind of campaigned for a little bit. I tried to jump in and take it, but you know, uh, Bobby Green, who who rightful so has earned his opportunity to step up. I think it's going to be a really good fight. Um, Bobby Green's no joke either. Dude's got plenty of skill. He can wrestle. He can grapple. He can definitely strike. But uh, um, may, maybe my heart's in this one a little bit more for Jim Miller, but I'm going to roll with Jim Miller. Marcus, what are you thinking? Yeah, so I've been, I've had the opportunity to meet both these guys. And, you know, man, both of them are just like authentically who they are, you know? So, I do think they're sleeping on Jim Miller for sure. You can't sleep on him. Whenever you sleep on him, he shows everybody, you know, like you can't sleep on him. And I don't think Bobby's sleeping on him, you know, so I think Bobby's going to come and give him all he can stand. Uh, I do. I do think it's a good stylistic matchup for Bobby, but man, Jim knows how to make those adjustments. He he's that guy, you know, like he, he, even his last performance, super impressive, you know, like it's just crazy what he's able to do and what he's been able to accomplish. So I definitely think it's a close fight. That's a toss up for sure. Yeah, coin flip for sure. Just both guys have been around so long. But uh, I, I'm gonna go with. I'm just gonna go with Bobby. How about that? Okay. All right. So, so there's. I think this is the first fight you guys have differed on, right? You're going Jim uh, Miller, right, Kurt? And uh, obviously, uh, Marcus, you said you're going Bobby Green. Yeah, we got to differ on one at least, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that was it. All right. One more fight to go, guys. And this is a bantamweight fight. So obviously, Marcus, uh, I want to get your thoughts here first. Two former champions that are matching up with one another here. Cody Garbrandt, Davison Figueredo. Uh, Figueredo is a massive favorite. Minus 290. Garbrandt, uh, plus 245. We saw how good Figueredo looked, you know, making his... Uh, debut here at 135 does he keep it going does he beat cody garbrandt or does the former champ get a win here man you know it's gonna be a tough fight for garbrandt i just think that uh you know uh the years have just wearing a worn on him a little bit you know what i'm saying he's been through so many wars and davison's bringing that war he's one of those guys and he's coming up a weight class too so he can take that damage he has more energy uh, I can see where the odds are the way they are, but I'm not counting Cody out either. I mean, I remember again when Cody beat Dominic Cruz and everyone thought that he was going to reign for a long time. Cody is no joke, you know, and he's been around, has plenty of skill to take on a Davis and Figueredo. I just think he has to be smooth. If he's smooth and he's clean out there, I definitely think Cody could still take this and, uh, and upset and show that he's still that guy. Uh, but man, if I had to put money on it, Davidson's going to bring that war and I just... I feel like that's going to play heavily into the matchup. Yeah, and he's so fast. Kurt, do, does the speed make a difference here? Does Figueredo uh, get a, his second win in a row at 135? Um, I think so. I'm going to have to go with Figueredo if I was going to put some money down, man. But I'm still a huge fan of Cody. I would love to see Cody win. You know, everybody – I mean, come on. The dude's fought the who's who in the bantamweight division already, and he's had some amazing fights like with Dominic Cruz. Uh, probably – some of the best boxing in the Bantamweight division, but um, Figueredo's a dog, and I think he's been in more high-profile fights that goes like, or, or the bigger fights that were five rounds. I mean, look how many fights he did with... Uh, um, oh, Brandon Moreno. Brandon Moreno, yeah. So, uh, I don't know, man. It's going to be crazy, but at the same time, you know, Figueredo is coming up to 35, but you never know. He might come up there, and then that might be his... His weight class, man. So uh, can't count Cody out, but I'm going to go with Figueredo. Yeah, that, that's where I'm leaning to, guys. Uh, well, this really was a lot of fun. I can't wait for UFC 300. It's under a, a week away now. Um, last thing before we get out of here, uh, are either one of you going to be there in attendance? Or if not, where are you going to be watching it? Kurt, let me just start with you. Where, where are you going to be here for UFC 300? Yeah, so, uh, no, I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be in Biloxi, Mississippi. I, I'm supposed to be doing a, you know, a guest appearance for a big thing down there at the Beau Rivage. 
So uh, I don't know if it's a fight party or something. They called me and asked me to come and be in a guest appearance. So I'm like, all right, for sure. I'll be there. So uh, it should be fine. Marcus, where will you be? You know, I don't know. I don't make plans until the day of usually. <laughs> but uh, I'll probably be over at my brother-in-law's house. There, His parents have been hosting like a lot of the big fights over there. They have a big little gazeta in the backyard. So I am going to come to Vegas, though, to do the Marcus Deegan show uh, this week. So I'll be dropping in on Wednesday. I was like, man, why did I choose to come in Wednesday? I don't get why I do these things. But uh, I'm going to drop in, but I'm hightailing it back. Gotcha. Well, I can't wait for this card, guys. And thank you very much to the both of you for joining me and, and previewing each and every one of these fights of, again, maybe the biggest uh, MMA card in the history of the sport. Uh, this was a lot of fun. So uh, hopefully I can get the both of you back again in the future to do this again. What do you say? For sure. I'll be happy to. Uh, one more thing, though. Let's. Uh, oh, I'm game. What color canvas you think they're going to have? Because I know for sure they have it. It's a different color canvas. Yeah, that's a great question. I, oh, man. Well, th for UFC 200, it was gold or yellow, right? Yeah, it was yellow. Yeah. What do you think? What do you guys think? I think it's going to be black with, like, gold, like, all the gold outlines. That would be cool. Yeah. What, what, do, you, what do you think, Marcus? Does that make sense, or do you lean another way? That, that makes sense, but for some reason, blue keeps jumping in my head, so I'm just going to throw it out there. Blue, some type of blue, magenta. I don't know if magenta is even blue, but something like that. Yeah, that would pop. It, that, that would pop, and, and just like the, the gold did, but even the black with the gold trim, that would look good, too. So I'm sure whatever they do, it'll work, because the UFC always seems to make the right decisions. For sure. Awesome. Well, thank you both. Uh, I appreciate the time again, guys. Enjoy the fights, and uh, I look forward to doing this again uh, next time. For sure, yeah. Thank you, guys. I appreciate Sounds it. Good. Mark, it's good to meet you, man. Look hey, forward good to, to meet seeing you some too, more your fights in the future, bro. Likewise, man. Jump on a card together here soon. It sounds like we're trying to get around the same time, you know? So Yeah, man, for sure. No, that would be cool. That would be cool for sure.